Howdy, it's Matt, and in this video, we are going to be getting a perfect size hole through our servo control horn. Uh, something which you may have got lucky on before, uh, or maybe you've just got a drill and you've drilled it out. And by the way, getting a drill, like grab drill off the side, trying to get a drill bit in there on the right angle, or trying to use one of the the little thumb screws uh, to to drill out a hole in the servo, complete pain in the butt, and sometimes just not the right size. So what I've been and got here, and let me just go and zoom in for you, uh, so you can see what I've got the setup which I've got, is that uh, I've got a set square, again, share the whole story with you, I've got a set square, set square marked up 90 degrees of where I needed the, uh, uh, the control horn on the surface, so mark that with a pen and screwed that in, and I've got the uh, push rod here, and you'll see that I've wound on the end halfway on, so that we can go move forwards and backwards very easily, uh, and then what I did, a big tip for you actually, is just get some masking tape, which I'm here, oh, there it is right in front of me. Just get some masking tape, is that the servo is centered, and I put some masking tape on the wire, uh, and then got a pen and marked where I needed to put a 90 degree bend, uh, and then got the pliers out and bent it. So that is now at the perfect length. Also, a big tip for you, uh, how do you know how much reflex to put in this uh, rear Elevon on a flying wing? Well, the thing is, is that if you get something, a sort of flat surface and put it underneath, and then you continue the flat surface around, is that chances are you're going to be very, very close to the angle of reflex which you need in your Elevon. So a uh, nice flat surface underneath the actual wing itself, use something of a straight edge or a ruler, just mount it flat underneath the wing and you'll be pretty damn close to say the least. So coming back to my point, the servo hole, okay, in our servo uh, control it horn in here. At the moment, all the holes, if I turn this round, none of the holes which we've got there, if it focuses, uh, are the right size for the rod which I have here uh, in my hand. So what do, what can we do about that? Well, the easiest thing, and uh, it is actually by far the easiest thing to do, is that, let me just unclip that one and pop that in the middle, is that what I'm going to do is take a blowtorch, and it sounds excessive, okay, but you will end up with the perfect size hole, is that what we're going to do, we're going to blowtorch the end of this till it glows, uh, and then we're going to poke that through the hole where we want it to do, and obviously you, you make sure you put it in the same hole on this side as what you do on the opposite side as well, but we're going to push it, we're not going to push it and hold it there, because we're going to end up with a massive hole, what we're going to do, we're going to push it through the hole so it melts the hole to a perfect size and then we're going to carry on pushing the uh, still through the, the push rod all the way through the hole so it meets the cold at the end and that will seal the hole, it will stop it melting uh, and then that means is that we end up with a perfect size hole for our control uh, push rod in our servo control horn uh, and of course by the way this does also work for uh, control uh, horns as well so I've just got the blowtorch out I'm um, just blowtorch in the end just waiting for it to glow yeah it's just changed color perfect so you, again you don't need too much heat for this uh, and I'm lining it up with the hole and we're through there we go and I've pushed it all the way through again I'm trying to do my best to keep it away from the laminate over here I don't want to go and burn a mark in it uh, and that's all we need to do, pull it back out again, and there we go. What we have now been achieved is a perfect size hole for the control rod. There's me trying to get it in there. That is now the perfect hole, and there is literally no slop in that at all. So I sincerely hope that little tip has been and helped you. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm sure someone will ask about these little clips, uh, is that if I just quickly put that and pull that one off in a second and show you these are the little wire clips which I'm using uh, to retain them on the if I put that on the screen I zoom in I'm just going to clip the end off okay now obviously what I'm going to do in a moment uh, is get the wire snippers out and just cut that end off uh, these little clips I'll put a link to them in the video description for you they're super cheap uh, and they're really really strong they just clip over uh, the push rod and that that's never coming undone then uh, what invariably happens again I found from experience with a different wing uh, is that they that this section won't break what actually happens is that your control horn here on the surface breaks instead so those are super tough uh, and you can take that from somebody who has hit uh, far too many trees 
So, with that said, for myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this episode. Uh, if you've got any questions about what we've just been uncovered here, uh, please just ask in the comments section underneath this video. Uh, and yeah, just a simple tip. Uh, I, I've, I've been using this thing for like months and I, I kept meaning to make a video to share this with you and I'm really chuffed that I'm able to get around to uh, showing you how to do this because it's one of those little simple things which uh, once you realise that you heat it up, push it through, and then it cools down the hole and pull back out again. You will end up with the perfect size hole in the control horn, uh, the servo control horn, no matter what size uh, holes you've got in your servo control horns, obviously, assuming they're smaller. Anyway, for myself, Matt, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video, and I'll see you again shortly. Cheerios!